to another video. So today we will be discussing about the different definitions that have bothered you for a long time, right? So let's try and make each of this concept very clear to you. Before starting any of it, you have to understand these two things. The black dot represents a derived trait in the phylogenetic tree and the red dot represents an ancestral trait. Now, what do you mean by each of this? An ancestral trait is something that is present in one's ancestor and is passed down to each of its descendants or the taxon. Okay. Whereas a derived trait is something new, a new characteristic feature, which was actually absent in the ancestor. However, has been developed in one of the taxons. So it's a newly developed trait or a characteristic. Now, knowing this, you're good to start. So first definition is apomorphy. Let us see what an apomorphy is. So a derived trait or character that is unique to a group or species. So if you observe the tree right here, this black dots represent the derived trait. So can you see that the ancestor doesn't have these traits. It has, it has newly been formed right here. So the derived trait or character unique to a group or species is called as an apomorphy. It is not present in your ancestral form. Next one is ought apomorphy. Now it is a subtype of apomorphy I can say. What is the difference? Like apomorphy, it's a derived trait, means it's not present in the ancestors. And the special part is it is found only in one taxon and absent even in the closest one. For example, these two came from the same ancestor. This is taxon one, this is taxon two. Now the taxon one has a special character, a derived trait that is not even present from it in its closest relative or in its closest taxon. So this is called as an odd apomorphy. Let me give you one example. The human verbal speech. So you, the ancestor of humans didn't know this language. This language is exclusive to the human taxon and hence it's an odd apomorphic feature. Next up, sin apomorphy. Now in a sin apomorphy, same, it's a type of apomorphy, right? So it's a derived trait. We are talking about some new trait. But this trait is present in that entire clade, okay? And it sets that particular clade apart from the others. Let's look here. Now, if you want to understand this better, I've made a video on clade and its types. I'll link it up here somewhere so you will be able to understand that concept also. So please click on that button and then come back and see this if you don't understand. Now, this entire clade, okay, has this derived trait. It sets it apart from the remaining of this. So then this is called as synapomorphy. And the example is presence of digits. Now, presence of digits are in all the tetrapods. But here it's not present. So that is a particular trait that is exclusive for one clade, okay? Stay back with me at the end of the video. I will be showing you an example where we'll mark each of this type. Okay. So we studied three till here. Apomorphy. Then two types of it. Ought apomorphy and sin apomorphy. Till now we have only been talking about the derived trait. Mind you. Next we have plesiomorphy. Now let's see what a plesiomorphy is. Here we are talking about an ancestral trait. So an ancestral trait that a taxon retains throughout evolution is called as plesiomorphy. This red part right here. So this I can say is a plesiomorphic character. Why? Because it's an ancestral trait that is retained in throughout evolution. Okay. So more than two taxa can be in different groups yet share this character. As in these two are in different taxa, they don't have this common ancestor, right? However, they share the same trait. So this is an example of plesiomorphy. There's something called a simplesiomorphy, which is another 
word I can say for this where the similar characters or the similar ancestral trait is found in the different taxa. And very good example of this is the quadrup quadrupedalism that you see in reptiles and amphibians, correct? So reptiles and amphibians all have the ability for on, of walking on four legs, right? So this character sets it apart from the others. Or I can just say that it's an ancestral thing that has been passed on from one generation to another generation, right? And one thing I need you to understand is this plesiomorphic characters would be somewhere way down in the phylogenetic tree. And why is that? One, because it's an ancestral trait. Two, because it's going to be a common feature of all. So wherever that trait is, it would be at the bottom because that's how it can be passed on to the next generations. Next up, we have homoplasy. Now, what is homoplasy? So it is a character that is shared by at least two organisms, but not found in the common ancestor. Here we are talking about a derived trait. Look at the phylogenetic tree. So your unrelated taxons, this taxon is nowhere related. It's a distant, and it's a distant descendant of it, I can say, because see the common ancestor is way back. After that, it has further diverged out. However, this is just exclusive to these two. So the derived trait is present in two organisms of that tree with no common ancestor. No common ancestor meaning no latest common ancestor. The ancestor that was common must have been way backwards. Okay. So that is an homoplasy. Very good example is the trait of warm bloodedness. Now mammals and birds are not having a common ancestor. However, they both being in different sections have the same trait of being warm blooded. So this is an example of a homoplasy. Hold on, don't click out of the video. Let's see an example. So this is a trait. This is a phylogenetic tree where you have the common ancestor here. And then there are different branches you can see. Insects, fish, amphibians, birds, lemnodes and humans. Now let's start marking each of the character. Now, have, being a vertebrate is a feature of all of this. So this is an ancestral trait that has been passed down to each of them. And hence, it is a simplesiomorphy. Plesiomorphy, we say when it is an ancestral trait, sim meaning it's common in most of these groups. So as I told you, it will be a bottom feature of this. So this one. Next, let us mark out sin apomorphy. Now what is apomorphy? Apomorphy comes from the derived trait. So this is some new trait that is present in one particular, I can say clade. So look here, this is a clade, right? This thing is a clade. This thing right here. So lemurs and humans both have here. So this is an sin apomorphy because it is setting this clade apart from the rest of it. Next is apomorphy. So apomorphy is what a trait that is particularly specific to only one taxon. More specifically, it should have been an odd apomorphy because it is only present, this ability, this character is only present in humans. And if I had to mark homoplasy, I would have marked your, um, I was saying your birds and humans both are warm blooded. So this would have been a homoplasy. If I had to mark it here somewhere, it would have been a homoplasy. So I hope this concept has been crystal clear in your head. If you understood it, if you liked it, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Bye.